Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So look at this chart over here. When I first started with technical analysis, this is pretty much how my charts look like. I have things like support resistance, trend line, trend channel, moving average, RSI, MACD, etc. A lot of stuff on my chart. After all, I was thinking, you know, the more stuff I have on the chart, right, the better I can make my, you know, predictions in the market. But boy, I was wrong. Why is that? And simple, when I have so much things, right, so much tools and stuff on the chart, I get a lot of conflicting information. For example, the chart pattern can say buy because it's a breakout. But when I look at the indicator, it tells me that the market is overbought. It's a sell signal. So should I follow the chart pattern or should I follow the indicator? So you can see where I'm coming from. I feel very conflicted, very confused, right? very frustrated. It's kind of like you no know, dating a girl. She says that, oh, Raina, I love you. I love you so much. I miss you. And every time I message her, she replies me three days later. What's going on? Eh? If she really likes me, eh? she'll reply you know, within three minutes. Yeah, so this is the same thing for trading. I feel very conflicted, right? With a lot of you know stuff on my chart. And it took me a few years to kind of figure out that you know technical analysis doesn't have to be this confusing. So this is why in today's training, we're going to do just that, right? What you'll learn, number one is, firstly, where exactly on the charts do you buy or sell without second guessing yourself? Man, I think I can be a poet. <laughs> Next, you will learn, right? How to better time your entries and exits with precision. How to protect your account and maximize your profits. And all in all, in today's training, what we are trying to accomplish is this, to share with you a secret formula so you can profit in bull and bear markets. And this formula, it works, right? For the stock markets, the forex market, or even if you trade crypto. Sounds good, right? Then let's get started. Now, the first part of this formula is what I call market structure. The concept is very simple. Market structure wants to, un to answer this question. What to do? What do you do in a given market condition? Because if you think about this, the market can only be in one of three market conditions. Either it's in an uptrend, a downtrend, or range. Not familiar? Don't worry, let me explain. So the market is said to be in an uptrend when you have a series of higher highs and higher lows. So if you look at this chart, look at the highs on this chart. Higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high, higher high. If you look at the lows, the swing lows, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. You get a message and you look pretty much from left to right of the chart, you see that the market is heading up higher. Let me ask you, when you see the market in an uptrend, do you want to be a buyer or a seller? It's not a trick question, it's a logical question. And the answer is you want to be a buyer. Reason being is that when the market is in an uptrend and you're a buyer, your upside potential is a lot higher. Look at the, the magnitude of the up move, right? When the market is in an uptrend. So if you look at this, when the market goes up, this is the huge upward movement, right? If you're a buyer, huge upward movement, huge upward movement. See the potential, right? That the market can move in your favor when you're a buyer in an uptrend. And if you think about this, right? If you are a seller, this is pretty much the amount of potential profits that you could get. Notice that the move, is so much smaller. So this is why in an uptrend, as much as possible, you want to look for buying opportunities. And later on, I'll share with you where exactly to look for buying opportunities. But just understand this concept for now. Next, a downtrend. This is just the inverse. In a downtrend, you'll notice that the price makes a series of lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and lower low, lower low, and lower low. So you look from left to right, the market is pretty much heading down lower over time. So one thing about the markets is that it doesn't go down in one straight line, you know, it goes down lower, makes a pullback, then goes down lower, makes a pullback, goes down lower. Same for uptrend. And question, in the downtrend, do you want to be a buyer or seller? You should be a buyer. Just kidding. You should be a seller, right? Look for selling opportunities, right? Because again, the concept is the same. If you are selling in the downtrend, look at the profit potential. This is the amount of profit potential that you could get, right, towards the downside. This is the magnitude of the move that you can expect. This is the magnitude of the move that you can expect. Whereas compared to, you know, buying in a downtrend, you look at the profit potential. If you are a buyer in, in a downtrend, notice that this is the move that you could possibly get over here. The move is a lot smaller, right, compared to the downward momentum. And finally, range market. So range market is where the market is just pretty much contained between the highs and lows. So if you look at this, contained between these highs and contained between these lows. And let me tell you a secret. When the market is in a range, right, I don't just randomly, you know, buy the lows of support or sell the highs of resistance. In other words, I don't simply blindly, you know, buy over here or sell over here. Actually, right, what I do is that I still will take a direction when the market is in a range. Sometimes I might look to buy at support in the range market and sometimes I would prefer to sell at resistance in the range market. I'll explain to you why shortly I have actually this particular uh, habit, right, and you'll discover why shortly. But for now, right, if you think about this market structure, right, six to do something simple, right, which is to tell you what to do in a given market condition. For example, those of you who are watching this video, you're married, you have a wife or girlfriend, whatever, 
if you know that your wife is in a good mood, right, you know this is where you can, you know, sort of take advantage of it, ask her for a massage, ask her to make you some sandwich, a nice meal and whatnot, okay? And if your wife's in a bad mood, you're going to stop asking her for favours. In fact, you're probably the one you know, doing favours for her to make sure, you know, she is, you know, uh, her bad mood doesn't get worse, all right? So it's the same for trading, right? You will adjust your trading strategy according to different market conditions. And same thing for your wife, right? You adjust your treatment to her according to her mood swings, right? So same thing, you have to be adaptable, to be flexible, and market structure will give you kind of like a framework to know when to buy, when to sell, and maybe even when to stay out of the markets. And by the way, if you're enjoying the training so far, smash the thumbs up button. If not, hit subscribe. Okay, the second part of the formula is this area of value. This one is to answer the question, where do you buy or sell? Where exactly do you, on the chart, do you buy or sell? And to answer this question, you can use a very powerful technique or concept called support and resistance. So let me explain what this means. So support, right, pretty much means, right, that it's an area on the chart where buying pressure, where buyers could come in and push the price up higher. And resistance is an area on the chart where sellers could come in and push the price down lower. Let me show you, right, on the chart what this, this means, right? So if you look at this chart, this market, as you can see, this dollar against the Japanese yen, it's in an uptrend. So we want to ask ourselves, where on this chart, right, should we look for buying opportunities? Where is support on this chart? So if you were to look at this right here is how I would draw support. I would look for areas on the chart, right, where the price bounce off higher, right? The more significant the level, right, the more attention I want to pay attention to it here. Yeah? So for example, over here, I noticed that, hey, you know, the market has actually bounced off support, right, twice. Tested once, boing, came back down, tested twice, boing, second time, right? So this is an area of support I want to pay attention to. Another one, notice here again, how did the price actually bounce off higher from this lows to where it is right now? So what I'll do is again, I'll draw the area of support somewhere about here. So one thing about drawing support and resistance is that you don't need too many lines on your chart. Sure, I can draw more levels. So for example, I can draw over here, I can draw over here, but I, I wouldn't want to do that. Why is that? Because if you think about this, if the market were to, let's say, come back all the way down to this level, or even down to this level, would I ever want to be buying at that area of support? Not a trick question. And the answer is, is no. Why is that? And the reason is simple. If the price does get to this area of support or even over here, at that point in time, right, the trend has already shifted from an uptrend like this, okay, to a downtrend. And when the market is in a downtrend, I don't want to be buying support. I want to be selling resistance. So this is why when you draw support and resistance, right, pay attention, right, the two most recent areas are pretty much the most significant ones. The rest are, I would say, secondary. And if the the lower point of support gets touched by the market, probably the market has already shifted to a downtrend and you don't want to be buying support, right? That's what I've shared over here. So usually I just have the two most recent area of support on the chart like this. Now, I have drawn lines, but for those of you who want to take things a step further, maybe you want to, you know, look at it in terms of an area, you can use this tool over here, right? This, uh, this rectangle tool and just highlight it as an area. Whatever color you like, those who like red, right? Have it in red. Those who like pink, have it in pink, you know, blue, whatever. And this is another one that you can draw over here, right? So you can see now you have these two area of support on your chart that you know that, hey, these are areas on the chart that I want to look for buying opportunities, okay? So let's do one more example before we move on. How about we look for a downtrend this time around? So Euro against the US dollar, okay? So as you know, in a downtrend, we want to look for selling opportunities. So let's find the two most recent area on the chart where, hey, the price has, you know, come down lower from it. So if you look at this, here is one, and here is possibly another one. And one, one thing that is interesting that if you're unaware of is that whenever the price breaks below support, right, it could become resistant. So for example, this was previous support, support, the price breaks below support, now retest as previous support become resistance. Okay, so this is again, another area of support that you can see over here, support, support, a little bit of support, price breaks below it, previous support become resistance. So same thing, right? For previous resistance, the price, let's say, this was previous area of resistance, price breaks out of resistance, it could now become support and hit up higher from here. Okay, so this is uh, what I want to share as well. And again, likewise, if you are not comfortable looking at, at lines on your chart, you prefer it to draw as an area, the rectangle tool, right, is a very useful tool that you can use, right, to help you highlight the area on your chart, something like this. Okay, so now you have highlighted on the chart, you know, where do you look for buying or selling opportunities, right? The next question now is this. Okie dokie, the third part of the formula is this, entry trigger. And it simply wants to answer this particular question. When exactly do you buy 
or sell. So for entry trigger, this is where candlestick patterns are really useful. And I want to share with you two popular ones, right? Very useful one that, you know, will help you in your own trading. First one is what we call the hammer. Let me walk you through right how this works. So the hammer, when you see a hammer candlestick pattern on your chart, which you'll see shortly, what it tells you is that the market open at this price, okay? And it closes at this price, right? At this particular level over here. This over here is the highest price point, right, for the time frame. So if you look at this hammer, let's say on the daily time frame, this tells you that this is the highest price point for the day. And this is clearly over here, this lows is the lowest price point of the day. O is the opening price of the day. C over here is the closing price of the day. So very simple. So the story behind the hammer goes something like this. So this is where the market opened today, right, at this price point, okay? Then the sellers took control and pushed the price down all the way down to this lows. And then the buyers, you know, clearly, clearly they got pushed to a corner. And then suddenly, you know, they regained the strength. No, 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 I'm not going to tolerate any of this any longer. They go, ah, ah, you know, they start pushing the price up higher, right? And finally closing right near the highs of the day. So this tells you that at the early part of the day, right, the buyers, they were overwhelmed by the sellers, but they found the strength, the courage to push, right, the, the market in the uh, opposite direction, to push the market up higher, and finally closing with signs of strength for the day, closing near the highs of the day. So this is kind of like, for those of you who watch Avengers Endgame, right, you know, towards the end of the movie, you know, Captain America is just alone, right, against Thanos' army. Okay, and you know that at the point of time, oh man, that guy is screwed, right? You know, one guy versus like a few a few hundred thousand right, soldiers and bad guys. Some looks like, you know, a, you know, I don't know what they look like, right? And then suddenly, right, while, while you know, about to fight, right, the big battle, he hears something, right? You know, to your left or something like that. I think then after that, you saw the Birdman come in, right? Uh, his friend, right? Then after which, you saw, uh, who do you see? Black Panther, right? And the army, you know, Wakanda forever! <laughs> you saw that, right? So, over... After which, right, you know that the ending is, you know, of course, right, the good guys, Captain America, they won the bad guys. So you can see that emotional aspect, all right, of that scene, right, is similar to the hammer candlestick pattern, right, where the buyers at one point in time, they were getting overwhelmed by the sellers, right. At this lows is where, you know, Captain America is getting screwed, right, by the army. And then slowly the Birdman came up, you know, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda forever came up and, you know, they win the war, right, and close, right, on a high note, right. So it's kind of like the candlestick pattern. Uh, the hammer, right, if you ask me. The other... Candlestick pattern, right? Before I talk about the other candlestick pattern, is that so in short, right, when you see a hammer, it tells you that there is a bullish signs of strength. It tells you that there are buyers stepping in, right? And you know, uh they are temporarily in control. So when you see a hammer, right, it doesn't mean that you blindly, you know, hit a buy button. No, you also have to look at other context, right? Like you know, the market structure, uh, area of value, etc. But once you have all those right there and you see a hammer, that tells you that hey, now you know it's a time that you could possibly enter the trade on the next candle open, right? So again, I'm getting ahead of myself over here, but I want to tell you that the meaning of a hammer is that the buyers they are temporarily in control. Likewise, right, when you see a shooting star pattern, right, this is kind of like the inverse. Over here is where the market opened, they opened at this price point. The buyers were in control, right? Uh, early part of the day, right? And then the sellers finally say, uh, uh that's enough, right? And then it pushed the price down lower and finally closed near the lows of the day. So of course, this is the highs of the day and this is the lows of the day, right? Assuming this is a daily candle, right? This is the lowest price point of the day. So a shooting star pattern is kind of like, you know, uh, you going for exam, man, you didn't even study for your exam, right? And, and, and then you realize, man, I got A. I got A for this exam paper. So you're really high on cloud nine and only afterwards you kind of realize it's A for Epson, right? And the whole world come crashing all the way down, closing near the lows over here. So that's kind of like what the shooting star pattern sort of mean, right? At least that's what I think of, right? When I think of the shooting star pattern. So these two are very useful entry triggers to help you time your entry to know when exactly to buy or when to sell, right? Especially when you come across these two candlestick pattern. And as a bonus, right? One last thing I want to share with you is what I call the false break setup. This is not really a candlestick pattern, but it's a, a price pattern. So for example, let's say, Mark, uh, this is an area of support, okay? The price comes down to support, it bounced up higher, they came back down for a second time. So a false break pretty much means, right, the price actually break below support and, you know, traders thought, man, support is breaking now, it's gonna collapse lower. And next thing you know, the market quickly reverse back up support and close back above support. So this is what I call a false break. And this, again, is a very useful uh, entry trigger, right, to time your entry to go long. Don't worry. Later on, I'll share with you uh, some charts so you can see exactly how all this, you know, entry trigger, you know, fit in the big picture, all right? All right, so when it comes to exit, there are two questions, right, we are trying to answer over here. First one is this, exit when you're wrong. So where do you exit your trade if you're wrong, otherwise known as a stop loss? So when it comes to stop loss, right, I have a very simple principle. Your stop loss must be at a location, right, where if the price reaches it, 
it will invalidate your entire trading setup, your entire trading idea. Let me explain. So let's say, for example, you're looking to buy at support. Okay, price comes up. You buy at support, price up, it goes up higher over here. Where exactly do you set your stop loss? So a mistake that many traders make, right, pay attention, is that they simply set their stop loss somewhere here or maybe somewhere here. Number one and number two. And those are horrible places to set your stop loss. Why is that? That's because the market could easily just swing back down lower and then reverse up higher from there. So you can see if it does, like what I'm showing over you here, a false break, whether you set your stop loss at level one or level two, you're gonna get stopped out. So now how should you set a proper stop loss then? So this is what I recommend. When you set your stop loss, set it away from an area of value or set it away from, yeah, an area of value, away from price structure. So for example, again, go back to our support example. So let's say this is support, price bounce up, comes back down, bounce up higher. And this time, let's say you buy over here, let's call it E, or your entry. Your stop loss, right? you want to set it at a place somewhere about here. Because at this point, right, let's say S over here is your stop loss. If the price right, were to reach a stop loss over here at S, let me ask you, do you think that support right, at this point in time is broken? And I think for most of you looking at this drawing, you say, yeah, support is broken. And yeah, since your basis of basis of entering the trade is to buy a support, now support is broken, clearly you should get out of the trade exit the trade because this is where the market has proven you wrong. So whenever you set your stop loss, you want to set it at a level, right, where the market will invalidate your trading setup. Let me share with you just one more example, right, because it's so important. So let's say you're looking to trade the bull flag pattern. For those of you who are not familiar, right, a bull flag pattern is where the market, let's say, it breaks out. It forms like this out. It's what we call a bull flag pattern. And then let's say it breaks above the highs, you buy. So this is what we call a bull flag pattern. Now, at what price point, right, where if the market reaches that level, your bull flag pattern no longer looks like a bull flag pattern. I'll give you three scenarios. Point one, point two, or point three. What do you think? I know this is a little bit of a trick question and answer I'm actually looking for is actually more towards point three. Because if you look at point one and two, right, this low over here, right, is where buying pressure could come in. This is where potential uh, previous resistance, resistance could become support. So if you set your stop loss at one or two, the market can actually hit down lower, bounce into support and then go up higher. And if you set your stop loss at level one or level two, you probably get gotten stopped out of the trade. But if you set it at three, this is where you're giving your trade more room to breathe, right? You're setting your stop loss away from this price structure, away from this area of value. And that kind of like, you know, put the odds in your favor because you're not going to get stopped out prematurely or too easily, yeah? So this is what we mean by exit when you're wrong, right? You know, setting a proper stop loss. Now, what if, what about exit when you're right? Where do you take profit? So there are different ways to do it. You can, you know, you know, use like, you know, capture a swing, ride a trend and stuff like that. But for now, we keep things simple. We talk about capturing a swing. So let's say again, a uh, market, let's say it's uh, in a range, okay? Goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. Let's say you buy at support, right? And where on this chart, right, might sellers come in? Where might sellers come in and push the price lower? And as you know, this is an area of resistance. This is where sellers might come in. So this means you want to set your target profit, right? Just before this area of resistance. So maybe somewhere about here is a good level to set your take profit level. Because if the price goes up, right? Come into resistance, you take profit, great, right? Because what could happen is that the price comes into resistance and then quickly reverse down lower. So if you set your take profit level, let's say over here, over here, you're making the market work hard for you. You're making the market, you know, break out of resistance, resistance to reach your target. And if you were to make the market work hard for you, you will usually, you know, pay the price. Yeah, so as much as possible, right, the market is the big boy, right? Follow the clues, right, that's being left behind by the market, right? Don't try to, you know, push your luck, right? But rather, respect the market, respect the price structure. If you know that this is an area where sellers might come in, right, then be conservative, right? Set your take profit level just before that area of resistance. And this will kind of like increase your odds of, of actually, you know, exiting a trade with a profit. So these are two very simple guidelines, right, that you want to take into account, right, when setting right, your stop loss and target profit. So now, I've shared with you the entire formula, right, if you realize it's what I call the May formula. So a quick recap, this stands for number one, market structure, area of value, entry trigger, and exits. Later on, which is about right now, I'm going to share with you examples, right, trading examples, right, to see how this particular formula allows you to profit in bull and bear markets, right? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so let's walk you through a few examples using the May formula that you've just learned. And also along the way, I'll share with you some advanced price action trading
tips, right, to help you better time your entries and exits. So first part of the May formula, what is the market structure, right, based on the chart that you are seeing right now? Did I hear uptrend? Well done. So, okay, so the first thing we have is the market is in an uptrend. And as you know, right, if the market is in an uptrend, then we are looking to buy at an area of value. And in this case, it would be an area of support. Okay, so let's let's see, right? So I think in this case, we can draw this area of uh, support over here. I'm going to just draw this line briefly. Okay, I can draw it as a rectangle, right? But I'll just leave it as a line for now. So let's see and wait, right? And see how the price reacts at this area of support. So as you can see over here, the price came into support and then over here, we had a nice uh, looking reversal candlestick pattern. Right? I wouldn't really call this a hammer. I think it's more of a false break. So earlier you learned that one of the entry trigger is a false break where the price tick out below this lows and then quickly reverse back above support. So this is a classic example of a false break. So in this case, you can actually enter on the next candle open and set your stop loss a distance below this low. So let me take you a step further, right? How can you actually set an objective stop loss? So usually what I like to do is to actually set my stop loss, in this case, right, one ATR below this low. So what is one ATR? ATR stands for average true range. It measures the historical volatility of this currency pair. So you just go to indicator, search for ATR, pull out this indicator, and you see something like this, this line over here. So I usually like to go with the 20 period setting since there's 20 trading days in a month. I go with SMA and click OK. So that's the settings I usually use. So over here, what you can see over here is this, this number, 1.401. We'll take it as 1.4. What this means is that over the last 20 trading days, this currency pair, dollar against the Japanese yen, moves an average of about a dollar and 40 cent, right? Per day on average, so about 1.4 per day. So what I will do is I will find out what's the low of this candle. So in this case, the low of this candle currently is about 130.39. So I'll take 130.39, 130.39, and I minus one ATR, and you know one ATR, the value currently is about 1.4. So I just take minus 1.4, and that gives me, based on my trusty calculator, right, it's about 128.99. So the value is 128.99. This tells me that my stop loss will be placed at 128.99. So if I were to do that, right, is let's say my stop loss, I'm just going to put it over here. So I put it over here, okay? Let's put this line to, uh, let's say, red color to represent the stop loss. And let's say it's at 128.99, okay? Click OK. So at this point, right, uh, you can see that this level over here is your stop loss. Right, this level here is your stop loss. What about entry? You can look to enter on the next candle open. So let's see what happens the next day. Next day, the market open uh, pretty much where it closed over here. So this is your entry price. So I'll just put a green candle over here to signify the entry. Okay, let's just, I mean, I mean a green line, right? Not a green candle. <laughs> yeah, so this is a green line, okay. And uh, done, All right? That's your entry. What about exit? So if you remember, right, to exit the trade, we usually want to exit our trade before opposing pressure come in, before the sellers step in. So in this case, you can see that this over here is a swing high over here. So ideally, we want to exit our trade before this highs, before, you know, selling pressure come in and push the price down lower. So what we can do is we can set our target profit somewhere about here. I usually don't like to set it at extreme highs because it may not get to the extreme highs. So I set it usually a few pips below it somewhere about here, right? Let's set it to, in this case, let's say uh, blue color, shall we, for target profit, okay? And let's see what happens next, right? So you can see next day, the market, right, uh, filled, got us filled into the trade and then it moves up, moves against us. When in our favor, starts to stall, stall, boom, right? Now it's moving against us. So at this point in time, you would notice that your open profit says evaporate, right? You're not probably sitting in the red. And many traders will be tempted to, you know, just, you know, take the loss and move on, right? And, you know, prevent further damage. But think about this. You already set your entry, your stop loss, and your target. They all plan ahead of time. Your stop loss is at a logical level. You set your stop loss at this level because this is where you're giving your trade enough breathing room to breathe, right? Because, you know, what you know is that the price, for all you know, it could retest support here and then go up higher, right? And you don't want to, you know, have your stop loss being too tight, right? Because you could get stopped out prematurely. So let the trade do its thing. Your stop loss is already pre-planned ahead of time. Follow the plan, right? And let the market do what it needs to do. So let's see what happens. The market stalls, right? Forming something like a dragonfly uh, pattern, right? Then it starts to head up higher. Uh, red candle, some slight indecision. Then it goes up higher, great up higher, great, right? Moving up in our direction again, finally. Up again, fantastic. Yes, almost there. Ah, so close, so close, right? So at this point, traders might be tempted to take profit, but remember, 
you already set your target ahead of time, it's planned, right? Let the market do its thing. So in this case, right, you can see shortly afterwards, you would have gotten, uh, exited this trade for a profit, right? So again, this would have been a winning trade. So that's uh, pretty much how the May formula works, right? And for now, let's move on to another example and share with you a different uh, type of exit that you can consider. Now, let's have a look at another example, shall we? So again, the May formula, I'll just do a quick recap here in case, you know, some of you have short-term memory like me. M-A-E-E, -E, right? May one. Ask you, what is the market structure that you're seeing on this chart over here? This is the New Zealand Canadian, the four hour time frame. What is the market structure? The market is in a downtrend, right? Great, right? Market is in a downtrend. So you know that the market is in a downtrend, then where will you look, right, to trade from? Where is the area of value that you want to pay attention to? In this case, area of value is at resistance. Fantastic, right? So let's cover this first too. So you know, market is in a downtrend. Area of value, I'll probably highlight this one over here. Okay, that's uh, probably the key one that I'll pay attention to. And let me just change this to black, right? So we don't get confused later on with our entries and exit. Okay, and again, for those of you who prefer to have it drawn as a rectangle, you can, you probably look something like this, right? As an area on your chart, right? That's perfectly fine. So all that's left to do, or rather the next thing to do is to wait for the market to come towards your area of value, or in this case, resistance. So you can see the market head up into resistance, okay? Breaks into resistance at this point, and this candle over here, we have a valid entry trigger. This is what we actually call a bearish engulfing pattern. This The story behind it is similar to a shooting star pattern, right, where the the buyers were initially in control and then they quickly, right, got uh, disrupted and the market got pushed down lower by the seller, closing below resistance. Also, actually, you can see it's actually, actually a false break as well. The market actually took out this highs and quickly reversed back in to below resistance. This looks like number one, but anyway, yeah. So this is a valid entry trigger to go along, telling you that the sellers are in control. So what you can do is again, to enter on the next candle open. So again, uh, next candle open at this price point, let's put this as green, right? To, signal, to signify that is our entry point, okay? I notice there's quite a few black lines over here. I'm gonna remove uh, some of them so you can see better, okay? Now, what about our stop loss? So in this case, again, you can pull out the ATR indicator, the average true range indicator. I'll just do this one more time. So what we are trying to do over here is to set our stop loss a distance away from resistance because we don't wanna get stopped out prematurely. So what you'll do is again, find out what is the high over here and add on, right, by this number of uh, ATR value. In this case, is about 45 pips. So let's do a quick calculation. The high of this candle currently, it shows that it's about... Uh, let's see, 7885, okay? So 7885, you plus 45 pips, right? That gives you 7930. So your stop loss will be placed at 0 0.7930. So I'll change this to rate, okay? And 0 0.7930, got it. Okay, so that is your stop loss level, right? This over here is your stop loss. So basically how you interpret the stop loss level is that from this high, you add on one ATR, okay? You add on one ATR, is equals to this level that you're seeing on the chart over here. Next thing, right, where is your target? So if you look at target, right, there are two levels that showing up over here. One is this recent swing low, and this one is more of an extreme, uh, further away, right, that swing low. So in this case, usually I like to have a first a conservative target over here. So in this case, you can actually have your trade, right, all exit at this swing low. That's a perfectly, you know, valid uh, thought process. Okay, but at the same time, right, let me just remove the indicator. At the same time, right, some of you might be thinking, but Rainer, if you look at this market, right, if you look back, this market is actually in the downtrend, Rainer, right? and the price tends to break below this low, break below this low, break below this low, because you look at this, the price over here, it breaks below this low, and then it makes a pullback. So, won't we, like, you know, be giving up some potential profits because we can still look to capture this additional bit of the move, right, as the market breaks down lower, lower, right? So, that's a, a fair thought, right? So, actually, what you can do in this case is actually to have two targets. One is a more conservative target and one is a further target. So, let me share with you how to do this. So, in this case, your first target can be over here. Okay, this is your first target. Let me just change this to blue. Let's call this target one, right, TP1. Okay, and you can have a second further target, right? As you know, the market is in a downtrend. It could break below the lows and go a little bit further. So in this case, this is the uh, extreme low over here. For all you know, this market could possibly, you know, break below this extreme low, right? And then make a pullback. So you want to kind of like take your profits, right? Somewhere about here, right? Where you can get the most bang of, for your buck. So how, how do you do this, right? So how can you do this objectively? So what you can do is you can use a tool, right? Called a Fibonacci extension, right? And look, to uh, exit right at the, just before the 127 extension. So I'll just get out, show you what it means. Look at trend-based FIB extension, click on this. You draw it from the swing high to the swing low and back up high again. So this is the swing high, down to this extreme low, and then up higher again. 
Okay, so once you do that, you can see that over here, I can't see it over here, are they over here? I'll just manipulate this chart a little bit, okay? You can see over here, I want you to pay attention to this level over here. This is what we call the 127 extension. And over here is an objective way where you can look to set your second target. So I'll just draw a second blue line over here just before the 127 extension, maybe somewhere about here, okay? So let's see what happens next, right? So in this case, right, uh, I'll just remove the feedback extension since it looks a bit messy, but at least you know, you know how this second blue line come about. We actually use the Fibonacci extension to kind of like project, right, where the price could go, right? So we can just take advantage of that extra little pips, right, as the market break down lower. So what I mean by this is that, example, this is a swing low, market break this swing low by quite a little bit before it makes a pullback. So the question is, where exactly, right, do you take profits, right, as the market breaks down lower? So this Fibonacci extension gives you that a little bit of objectivity to it. Okay, so I'm just going to remove this Fib extension first and see what happens. So in this case, the market, you can see that it pretty much went lower over here and hit our first target relatively quickly. So at this point, market continued down lower over here, almost reaching our target here and didn't quite, and now it's making a pullback. And uh, as you can see, this is how the market is right now. So at this point in time, right, so what you can do is actually, you know, your stops is already in place, your first target is already taken, and your stop loss is already at a logical level, it's still over here. So what you can do is again, leave your stop loss as it is, right, and let the market either, you know, hit your this second target or hit your stop loss, right, because there's really no point, you know, trying to shift your stop loss, right, uh, to break even, because again, there's a good chance you could get your stop loss hit at break even. So what many traders like to do in this case is that they set their stop loss to, let's say, break even, they bring their stop loss down to their entry point. But to me, that's not really very logical because there is no like kind of like barrier, right? Because this is an area of resistance. If the market comes up higher and then hits down lower, you can see that in this case, right, you will get stopped out on your trade, right, on the second half of the position and the market eventually hits your target and you're not in it because, you know, you got, you give in to your fear. So usually what I do is that, you know, my stop loss is already at a logical level. I'll leave it as it is. My target is uh, at this point over here, I know I almost got filled on the trade, but I didn't quite. So I'm just going to leave my plan as it is. Either it's going to hit my stop loss or hit my target. I already taken partial profits on this first target over here. So even if the second position hit my stop loss, hey, guess what? This overall trade will not really be a loser. It's probably going to be more of a break even trade or a very, very tiny loss. So at least uh, that's my thought process to how I would you know go about handling this trade. Alrighty. So in this example, right, I want to share with you an example about the range market. So if you look at this one, at this point in time, this chart, the market might seem to be in a range. And earlier, if you recall, at the earlier part of this training, I mentioned that when the market is in a range, I still tend to have a directional bias. Sometimes I want to be buying only a support or sometimes only to sell at resistance. So now the question is, how do I decide when the market is in a range? Do we buy at support or sell at resistance? That's what we're going to cover right now. So if you look at this uh, market at this point in time, right, what I want you to do is actually to go up to a higher time frame and see what the market is doing. So if this is the eight hour time frame, I'm going up to the daily time frame. And as you can see over here, the daily time frame, this market is actually in a long-term uptrend. This means, right, on the lower time frame, if the market is in a range, as much as possible, I want to be a buyer. I want to buy at support because I know that the market is in a long-term uptrend. And because you're buying at support and the market is in a long-term uptrend, the chance of the market breaking out of resistance is higher. Okay, so let's get back to the charts, right? So this is the eight hour time frame chart that I was sharing earlier. So again, the same thing applies, right? So market is in a range. We look to identify the area of support that we want to trade from. That's the uh, area of value. So I'm just going to draw this horizontal line somewhere about here. Change this to blue to signify uh, support, shall we? Next thing is to wait for the price to come into support. So let's see. So in this case, the market has come into support. Great. Next candle over here. Right, has break below support. At this point in time, many traders will think, oh man, right now the support is going to break down, right? Let's short this market, okay? Then what we see next happen is that the market then show signs of reversal. And this is what we call a, actually, a false break. It's a valid false break as the price took out below these lows and then quickly reverse and close back above support. At the same time, right, traders who are familiar with candlestick patterns, they might call this a bullish engulfing pattern that's fair enough as well because as you can see the candle has actually engulfed right the prior candle so this is the prior candle this green candle has actually covered the body of this prior candle over here the red one so this is what we call a bullish engulfing pattern so of course needless to say what we can do is actually go along on next candle open so let's see what happens next candle you can see that this is the opening price let's set this as our entry right so let's change this to green this is our entry Stop loss. I'm not going to do the one ATR calculation because you should be familiar by now, but your stop loss, I would say, somewhere about here. Okay, let's change this to red. There you have it. Okay, 
this black line, I'm just gonna remove it since you know this is an area of support and remove it. So what about targets? So, you, so you know that the higher time frame the market is in an uptrend. So how can you, you know, uh, take advantage of it? So again, you can use similar principles that you've learned earlier. For example, if you want to exit your trade before opposing pressure steps in. So I would say this is a good level to reference to, right? Because this is where sellers could come in, right? So over here, let's put this as our target just before this area of resistance over here. Okay, so just before this area of resistance, we look to take some profits off the table. And as you've seen, right, earlier you've learned a technique where we use a Fibonacci extension, right, to kind of like project where the uh, the move might end. Okay, so of course you can use Fibonacci projection for your second target. But another technique I want to share with you is what we call trailing your stop loss. This is very useful because as you've seen, right, on the daily time frame, this market is in an uptrend. So imagine this, imagine that the market breaks out of this highs. It breaks out of this highs and then continues up higher. You can imagine that there's a lot of profit potential towards the upside. So how can we capture this trend? So what you can do is to use a trailing stop loss. So there are many ways to trail your stop loss. Okay, let's go back to the eight hour time frame again. There are many ways to trail your stop loss, but one uh, approach you know you can use is moving average. But for now, let's see what happens in the, in this uh, on this time frame. So you can see that market starts to you know show signs of. Uh, Headache about to hit higher, right? So this one you can see market quickly hit our first target over here. Okay, at this point in time, right? Your first target is met, right? And let's say you have, you know, uh, you sell half your position, right? At this first target. So you have the remaining half of your position still on. So how can you manage the trade on the remaining half of your position? So let's say for example, right? Let's just for simplicity, say, let's say you buy 10,000 units of dollar against the Chinese yuan. You sell over here 5,000 units, right? So at 5,000 units at this highs over here. So you take profits. So what's left over here now is you have the remaining 5,000 units on this uh, currency pair, dollar against the Chinese yuan. How can you manage this trade on the remaining 5,000 units that you are long? So what you can do is to trail your stop loss, you can use something like the 50 period moving average. So for example, you just go to moving average. Okay, such so this one comes up. Uh, typically, if you're gonna trail your stop loss, I recommend, I won't really, I mean, I won't say recommend, but if you're gonna write medium term trend, right? You can use a 50 period moving average and click OK. Okay, so what you can see over here on this chart is this blue line over here. This is the 50 period moving average that I've inserted on the chart. So the way to trail a stop loss is that you will hold the remaining position that you have until the market breaks and close, right? Breaks and close below this 50 period moving average below this blue line. And of course, if the market continues up higher, that 50 period moving average will continue up higher along with it. So let's see what happens. So in this case, right, you can see the market breaks out higher. I'm just going to play this a little faster. Right, you can see that as the market goes up higher, as the market goes up higher, your trailing stop loss, your 50 period moving average is going up higher as well. So in other words, you're kind of like locking in your profits as the market progressively move in your favor. And you will exit the trade only when the market breaks and close below the 50 period moving average. So in this case, you can see the market continues up higher. Okay, almost right. Breaking and closing below the 50 period moving average, but it didn't. So we continue to hold right the remaining 5,000 units that we have on dollar against the Chinese yuan until the price breaks and close below it. So it's still grinding up higher, as you can see. Okay, and then over here, finally, it has now finally break and close below the 50 period moving average. And this is where we exit the final portion or the second half of our portion, right? of our trade, okay? So you can see that this, if you write this trend up higher, you can see that this uh, profit potential on this trade, uh, it's gonna be pretty attractive. This was your initial risk at the start, right? You can see this was your initial risk. And then look how much higher the market pretty much exploded to this point over here. So I would say in terms of risk to reward, I think possibly risking a dollar, you know, to make maybe four or five dollars or so. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much it for this, this example. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, so moving on, right? If you're enjoying this training so far, smash the thumbs up button. If not, hit subscribe. So moving on, right? Let's uh, do a super quick recap about the May formula. So again, May stands for market structure. A is area of value. E is for your entry trigger. And the other E is for your exits. Exits where you're right and exits where you're wrong. So if you look at this chart over here, this is the chart of gold, the daily time frame. What is the market structure? Market structure is in an uptrend. So we are looking for buying opportunities. Where is the area of value? So from what I'm seeing over here, I would say this is a possible area of value. So this area of value, I would say it's a little bit tricky in the sense that I see one over here and I possibly would see, let me just change this to black first. Okay, and I possibly see slightly lower another one over here. So you can see that this area of value is 
pretty wide, right? You have no idea whether it's going to retest this level or this level. And if you draw this like an area, it's going to be a pretty wide area. How do you kind of like, you know, set your stop loss when the area is so wide? How do you know when to enter? So what I like to do in this case is to let the market give me clues, right, to where it's about to show signs of reversal. So what I like to do is to let the market usually come down first, make a first test and bounce, and then come down again, make the second test giving me like a false break and then bounce up higher. So at this point in time, I roughly know that okay, buyers are coming in around this area. I will reference this level, right, to kind of like set a proper stop loss. Okay, so let's see what happens next. So I'll just uh, uh, let the market continue, right, heading down lower. At this point, we have like a hammer, okay? So at this point, I wouldn't want to buy over here because again, the market could at this point go up, right, and come down and continue the downtrend. That could happen. So I would want to see the market make another step lower and fail to go down lower, right? And that at that point in time, that's where I would want to time my entry to go long. Okay, so, but what we have over here is that the market has come into our area of value. Let's see what happens. Market heads up higher. Now consolidating a little bit. And then heading up higher. Nice. Now it got rejected a second time. So again, pay attention to this one over here. The market head up higher. Swing down lower, taking out this lows. And then on this most recent candle, notice the price rejection. The market tried to break down lower, couldn't and close almost near the highs of the days over here. So at this point, when I see this, right, I want to go long because the market has tell me that it tried to push the price down lower two times and failed. So that to me is a signal that, okay, buyers are possibly coming in from this area of value and could push the price up higher. So what I'll do is again, I'll look to enter on the next candle open. So let's see the next candle open over here. I'll look to go long. Okay, I'll just put this in green, signaling my entry price. I'll remove the two black lines since you know this is the area of value. I'll set my stop loss at 1 ATR from this most recent extreme low, which is this one here. So probably probably my stop loss is somewhere here. Okay, just change this to red. Okay, as for target, I will set it just before this most recent extreme high over here. Okay, pretty decent risk to reward. So set it over, over here. Okay, somewhere about here. I'll set, change this to blue. Okay. Some of you might be thinking about Reno, why, why not uh, you know this this level over here? I would say this one here is fine. Uh it's oh, it's okay to be honest, right? Because although your risk to reward is slightly less than one, probably one to zero point eight, I think that's a decent level to actually set it as well. So let's have another let's set a set of first target just before this extreme swing. Not, not extreme, but this most recent swing high. Okay. And a second one further away over here. So one and then the second one over here. Okay, let's see what happens next. So in this case, the market pretty much uh, reach our first target relatively quickly, but this is not a, a big winner because you're probably like risking a dollar over here, right? As you can see, this is your risk. This is your risk, okay? And this is your reward, right, to the first target. So I think you're probably risking like maybe a dollar to make 70 cents, 60 cents or so, right? But because you have a second target, overall this trade could still be a, a profitable trade, right, if it reaches your second target. So first target is met, let's see what happens next. So in this case, the market, now showing signs of reversal, going back to your entry, putting you in the red right now. So again, remember, many traders, they'll panic. Ah, wait, let me cut my loss. Let's move on, right? No, remember, your stop loss is already at a place, right, where it's logical. It's away from the noise of the market. It's away from support, right? Now support is not even broken. Support is now still intact. You don't want to be cutting your loss, right, into support, right? So your stop loss is there for a reason. Adhere to your stop loss. Let the market do what it needs to do. And in this case, you can see over here, market starts to, again, go up and up and down, right? Messing with your emotions and feelings. And then finally, you got stopped out on this trade over here. So this trade overall, I would say it will be a loser because your first your first target probably is not enough, right? Your first target here is probably not enough to cover the loss on this second half of your position. And it's perfectly fine. Why, where I'm going over here is to kind of like let you know that, you know, when you trade as a trader, you will have winners, you will have losers along the way. I want to be honest about this upfront. The May formula is not the holy grail. Okay, so manage your expectations. Hopefully by sharing losers with you, right? You would actually go out there to trade the markets, hopefully on the demo or a really small account, and to manage expectations to know that there will be losers, plenty of losers, right, that will come your way. Okay, just one last final example before we conclude today's trading, right? So this last example, I want to share with you a concept, what I call stack areas, right? This is pretty much where multiple areas of value come together, right, to kind of like increase, right, the odds of the price reversing at that area. So I want to share with you this concept. So if you look at this chart, what is the market structure? It's in A, 
uptrend. The, okay, so the market is in an uptrend and the next thing you want to do is to identify the area of value. So as you know, one way to identify area of value is, you know, identifying support on the charts when the market is in an uptrend. So over here, we see the most recent one is probably here. I would say it's quite significant, right, where previous resistance could, previous resistance, resistance could become support, okay? So around $79, $80 price point. So that is one area of value. So another way to define your area of value is actually using moving average as well. So in this case, let me just pull out a moving average indicator. Let's say we just go with a simple moving average like this. Oops, I think I have it. I already have it on my chart, yeah. So it's this one over here. You can see this is a simple moving average and I believe this is the 50 period moving average, okay? So you can see that the 50 period moving average for this market, for this time frame is significant as well because notice it tested once, bounce up higher. Tested twice, bounce up higher. Tested three times, bounce up higher. Fourth time, bounce up higher. And what is interesting is that right now, the moving average coincides with the area of value, the area of support that we have drawn earlier. So this is what I call a stack area of value. This is significant because again, we have multiple areas of value coming together and that increase the odds of a a reversal right at this area so this is an area that i want to pay close attention to and of course i don't just for me my style is not to just blindly you know let's say the market come in right place a buy limit order get filled over here no i still want to wait for a valid entry trigger to go long so now uh, what i would look for at least in this case right what i look for is for the price to head down lower okay maybe come here right then give me a bounce up higher okay and then come back a second time right try to break below this low but couldn't and then break it and then reverse up and close back above support so if i do to see this looking something like a double bottom pattern, right? I'll look to go long on the next candle open, stops the distance below the low. My first possible target could either be before this recent swing high or this further swing high away. So that would be my game plan to kind of trade this particular currency pair. So this trade is uh, it's kind of like ongoing. I have no idea how it's going to play out. But I just want to, you know, walk you through the live thought process that I usually have when I'm trading the markets myself. And by the way, if you're enjoying this trading so far, uh, don't have to smash the thumbs up button because I think you've smashed it a few times already. Don't, don't spoil your mouse. But what you can do is get a copy of this book called Price Action Trading Secrets, right? We talk deeper about price action trading strategies to profit in bull and bear markets, how to trade breakouts, how to trade pull back how to draw support resistance and much more i'll leave the link below this video where you can get a copy of it and with that said i wish you good luck good trading stay safe i'll talk to you soon